we are currently witnessing numerous changes unfolding in the U.S. economy and real estate markets. These changes have led to a large number of public and private companies struggling to reduce their debt burdens. Most of these companies have floating rate loans, which is a common feature for such loans. Now there is a real possibility of default for many of them when their loans reset. The situation applies to thousands of over-leveraged public companies, and a significant percentage of them are on the brink of bankruptcy. The debt held by these companies is structured with floating rates, covering various sectors, with real estate being the most affected. Unlike the residential market, the commercial real estate market is experiencing a full-blown crash. This has resulted in some sectors witnessing a first and a fire sale, putting real estate investors in a difficult position. They are facing the double challenge of floating rate loans, resetting at a higher rate and, in some cases, also dealing with a balloon payment due. Additionally, banks are now requiring new appraisals for commercial properties, further adding to the challenges faced by real estate investors. This period of economic turbulence is rare and unique, similar to what was seen post-2008 during the Great Financial Crisis. Interestingly, the surge in defaults and bankruptcies is happening, even before we have technically entered a recession. Typically, such financial troubles follow a recession due to the reduced discretionary income lowering spending, and declining company sales. However, this time, the situation is different, with a wave of bankruptcies occurring early in the cycle. Numerous large companies including Bed Bath & Beyond, Party City, Silicon Valley Bank, Jenny Craig, Envision Healthcare, and even Richard Branson's Virgin Orbit are facing bankruptcy or the have already filed for Chapter 11. This year alone, there have been more Chapter 11 bankruptcies than the entire previous year combined. Bloomberg reported on a potential corporate debt crisis with $500 billion of distressed debt, signaling the end of an era of easy money. The situation feels different from previous cycles, with many companies expected to default as interest rates rise, making the debt burden heavier. Real estate is one of the hardest hit industries. With $168 billion of distressed debt, the outlook appears challenging as central banks are anticipated to keep interest rates high for an extended period, adding further strain to companies already grappling with their debt. Please note that this chart only considers public companies, but the actual number is approximately 10 times higher. The situation is widespread across the country, with large commercial real estate investors simply walking away. Defaults seem to be occurring also daily. And recently, I came across another case involving a Starwood property called Tower Place in Atlanta, which defaulted with an imminent monetary default and balloon maturity default. The borrower confirmed their inability to pay off the loan, and the situation is being addressed by the council. It is an unusual phenomenon that might not be witnessed again for a long time. The primary cause behind these occurrences is undoubtedly interest rates, overnight rates, which were merely a quarter percent a year ago, have now surged to five and a quarter percent, making a 500 basis points increase in just a single year. This dramatic shift caused many off guard, as no one anticipated rates reaching such highs, let alone being sustained at higher levels. Consequently, companies that didn't secure fixed rates will face the challenge of either defaulting on their loans or dealing with interest rates that are about 500% 
higher than the previous year. For instance, a well-known CRE investor, Ben Mala, recently shared his struggles in dealing with rising rates and the stress it has caused in managing his $500 million commercial real estate portfolio. The situation is intriguing due to the contrasting behaviors of struggling companies versus large real estate investors. While the CRE-focused companies are not going bankrupt, they are simply walking away for their properties, leaving billion-dollar investments like the Star Wars property abandoned. The reason behind the behavior lies in the nature of most CMBS financing, which is non-recourse, allowing investors to walk away without incurring further financial liabilities. This has led to a chain reaction of property abandonments, resulting in discounted sales as loans reset for new owners. It's a surreal situation fueled by high interest rates and tightened lending standards. Since the end of Q1, banks have been writing fewer loans, and the situation appears to have become even more challenging. Fewer loans? This is a Fed Senior Loan Officer Survey, the SLUI. CE report. Three months ago, it was just as hard to get a loan as CRE as it was post-2008. There's this window, folks. This is period of time that will see real estate crash. And that's right now. We're smack dab in a midst of it. Commercial real estate is what I'm referring to, not residential. Residential is still dragging its feet. So how much will prices fall? What's the damage going to look like? Well, let's take a look. Morgan Stanley just published their newest commercial real estate price forecast just revealed on Monday. Now before we look at this, let's see just how accurate they've been. The last they updated their forecast was on March 28th. So take a, so take a look at this chart. It breaks down their original forecast by sector, showing the actual price declines thus far versus what they told us to expect for all sectors nationally. Now here's the new piece titled, How Much Could CRE Prices Decline This Cycle? Here's what they write, quote, We expect CRE prices to be down 27.4% from peak through in 18 to 24 months of this cycle versus 349 during the great financial crisis in 34 months. So 18 to 24 months versus 34 months back during the GFC, ranging from pers ranging from 15% for apartments to 40% for offices. Our propriety quant model forecasts peak through decline of 18.6% for apartments and 28% for office, given a lack of distressed sales as of May 2023. CRE peaked through prices as in down 12.1% in, in 10 months, ranging from negative 3.3% for industrial to 30 percent for apartments. And as for May 31st, here is where property price forecasts stand. They go on and break down their sector forecast. Here's what they say for all CRE property types. This is for CRE across the board nationally. Peak to through decline of 12.1% in 10 months, which is in line with their 27.4% in 18 to 24 months. Apartments. The apartment sector peak to through decline in 13.8% in 10 months. That's worse than their 15% in 18 months. So they were originally forecasting a 15% fall within 18 months. It has already fallen 14% in 10 months, so much faster than expected. But they are keeping it, they are say, they see downside risk though for the apartment buildings. Downside risk for negative 20% in 18 months. So it's going to continue to fall. They're saying, suburban offices peak to through decline of 8.8% in 10 months, better than their 40% in 24 to 30 months. 
but they say that the majority of price decline is still ahead as transaction activity and distress sales rise, in their view. How about retail? They say peak to through decline to retail is 8.1% in 10 months, better than their 30% in 24 to 30 months. But they say that the majority of the price decline is still ahead as transaction activity and distress sales rise, in their view. How about for our industrial? Peak to through decline of 3.3% in 9 months, better than their 15% in 24 to 30 months. They say that the majority of the decline is still ahead of us though. And look, they say that they maintain their overall forecasts. That's what they are saying. They are maintaining their 27.4%. And they go on to list the headwinds and tailwinds, in their opinion, for what could cause those prices to move up or down. In this case, move down considerably. Here's what they say the headwinds for prices are. Poor transaction volumes, distressed sales, fundamental occupancy, and net operating income growth. Credit spreads below great financial crisis levels. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for watching.